there is a saying that when you pay peanuts, you get monkeys. <laughs> now, if we go by the characteristics of great businesses who should be great capital allocators and cost saving, then how do you uh, filter the best value proposition out of such a lot? Because all those things are known to a lot of people and the business well, I mean, I think that, you know, like Charlie Munger says, why should it be easy to get rich? You know, so the thing is, uh, you know, be patient. And when you, when you find something that is, you know, widely mispriced, and you understand the asset well, you understand everything well, you can go in. And that probably may not happen maybe more than two, three times in two, three years or something. See, sir, basically, uh, let me give a brief background of who I am. Uh, I superannuated as Chief Finance Officer and President of Sri Cement. When I joined the company, it was six rupees per share. When I quit, it was 30,000 rupees a share. But I could never own it. There were two reasons. One was that I always used to find it expensive. And number two was that I did not want to go into any hassle with the regulators on insider trading kind of a point. And there was no ESOP in that company. <laughs> I agree with your philosophy of great capital allocators and cost heavy. But then uh, it has been compounding six rupees to 30,000, 20, sorry, not 30, 20,000 rupees. <laughs> it was a 0 0.6 million ton company when I joined. It became a 30 million ton company when I left. Net cash and books, no debt. All this was done. But then I was always bugged by the valuation the market was giving. And me being an insider, I knew that maybe this is a great business, but does it command that value? And that is a dilemma which I face now. That there are various great businesses compounding at great rate, good capital allocation, but how do you filter them? Well, I think, I think you bring up a very good point in the sense that if an insider like you could not forecast future cash flows five or 10 years out, then obviously when you are an outsider looking into a business, the job is that much harder. And, and the answer is that you only need one of those in your lifetime. So <laughs> you, you, have, you have 50 years as an investor and you only need to be right once <laughs> on a business like that. So I'll, I'll give you an example. There's a, and, and I find this example even more compelling than Nick Sleep's example. You know, we are, uh, we have gone past an hour. I'm not sleepy, but I don't know what your normal time timings are, Mr. Chandak. Have we both blown past your time or are we okay? No, we are fine, I think. That's all right. Okay, that's fine. So, so there's a company in South Africa which is now uh, 106 years old. They were like a book, book and magazine newspaper publishing company. It's a company called Naspers. Some of you may have heard of it. N-A-S-P-E-R-S. So in uh, 2001, Naspers, 20 years ago, invested 30, $32 million into this Chinese company called Tencent. Okay, so they put 32 million into Tencent and they got a 43% stake in that business. And uh, what is mind blowing about Naspers and the chairman, I mean, the guy who was the CEO, who's now the chairman, is through the 20 years that they owned it, they never sold the stock. And what, what ended up happening is the $32 million investment so Tencent has a market cap now of about seven or 800 billion. 
uh, US dollars and they they sold a little bit, I think, in the first four or five years, but basically they held about one third of 10 cent. So the, the 10 cent position that they own is like around $200 billion, okay? So this $32 million investment became $200 billion, became 8,000-fold return for them. And um, they have done extremely well on their other investments and other things as well. This wasn't just one aberration, uh, but everything else pales in comparison to Tencent. So the, the company has probably got a value of about $200, $300 billion at this point. And throughout this 20 year period, they got tremendous pressure from every corner you can think of to sell off the Tencent position. So Tencent became a billion dollar position, they were told to sell it. $10 billion position, they were told to sell it. $100 billion position. And to their credit, the two guys who were at the top pretty much told everyone to get lost. And even now, I mean, you guys may find this hard to believe, but at 700 billion, 10 cent is deeply undervalued. Deeply undervalued. Which is why they're not selling, right? So, abhi tak kahani khatam nahi. So, in the case of Nick Sleep, when he bought Amazon, I mean, he made he he made he bought some stock at thirty forty dollars. He bought some stock at hundred dollars. He bought some at two hundred, three hundred. He did not get that much return on Amazon by the time the fund was shut down, or even till today. I mean, even if you look at the most of the Amazon position is up ten or twenty fold. But in the case of Naspers what blows my mind, and I, and I studied these two guys at Naspers. I studied that And what I discovered when I studied these two guys is this was not a fluke. This was not a bunch of gamblers. These guys are extremely good at what they do. And in fact, he understood so one of the things that Nick Sleep understood is that exactly with the Walmart story. So what they understood is they are like a founder of Tencent. And you know, the Naspers has a very close relationship with Tencent. They sit on their board. They actually co-invest all over the world with them. It's a very good close relationship they have. So basically Naspers, which was a South African newspaper company, and the funny thing is that they bought that $32 million stake from Lee Ka Shing. Okay, so Lee Ka Shing is a multi-billionaire in Hong Kong, has done extremely well, really smart guy. He's worth $30 billion. If he had not sold this position, he would be worth $230 billion. Okay, so he probably is looking in the mirror saying, why the hell did I sell this, this position at all? But anyway, the thing is, it would have been almost impossible for anyone to hold that stock for the 20 years that this company has held the stock. And they're not done yet. I mean, in, in my opinion, when I look at something like Tencent, it would not surprise me if they hold it for 20 more years. And the 8,000X, they're not done yet. Abhi to kahani shuru hui hai. So the thing is that, you know, you don't need to be right that many times. What you do need is extreme patience. And when you find something that is incredible, you know, step up to the bat, uh, make it a meaningful bet. Sir, I will, I will top it up with only one comment. Hand of God. Hand of God. 